as you see, the kitten is not in the best condition. The condition of this kitten is not okay. Oh. My name is Rebecca Louise, and I'm a fitness entrepreneur, an advocate for animal welfare, and an ambassador for Four Paws. I am on a journey visiting my friends at Four Paws across the globe and seeing all the amazing work they do for animal welfare worldwide. After a few busy weeks visiting some of Four Paws' bear sanctuaries in Europe, it's time for something a little different. Our next stop is Bulgaria to check out some of the work that Four Paws does to help stray cats and dogs. Today we are in the streets of Sofia, Bulgaria, one of the neighborhoods where I am joined by Margot, who is one of the Four Paws veterinarians. Margot, tell me a little bit about what we are doing right now. We are now in Yavorov district. This is part of Sofia, where we are doing a cat stray cat survey, and also we are catching cats for neutering. Cat catching is a very challenging process because the cats are very smart and they can ex escape for a second. So, at first we'll catch the cats. After that, we'll go to our stray animal care clinic in Pankir and tomorrow we'll release these cats back on the street. Okay, so explain to me what is the setup? How is it that we go about catching these cats? So, our cat catcher, Ivo, he'll help us with the difficult task. There are two ways to catch the cats. The one is by hand, when the cats are friendly and when it is possible. Of course, this is the preferable method, but unfortunately, more than 80% of the cats are not so social to come and to let us catch them by hand. So what we are using now, we are using this trap. Now we put some food inside of the trap and we hope that the cats will be attracted by the food and they'll go inside. It will automatically close. It won't hurt the cat. And after that, we'll bring the cat into our car and uh, bring it to our uh, stray animal clinic in, uh, in Banke. Soon after setting the first trap, the first one of these stray cats is already attracted by the food. But sometimes things don't go quite as planned. In this case, the cat is just too light to trigger the trap door. Careful! We don't want to get her spooked and run away. Bravo! So we managed to get two. We almost yeah. got three, but it was interesting there to see that somebody from the public tried to help, and actually sometimes that doesn't quite help. Yes, this is, uh, this is exactly like this. The people are trying to help. We offered the lady that we can continue tomorrow with this cat, but she said, no, I can catch it now. And uh, you see the results. Because they don't have the um, knowledge is how to catch the cat in a proper way, because it's not just to paw the cat. You have to catch it and to put it into the cage. Right. So tomorrow we will catch the third cat for sure. Okay. Because, and we will know that here, the all three cats will be neutered and they will not uh, have any more litters. But now let's bring these two cats mm -hmm. to our clinic in Banke. Okay, excellent, let's go. The veterinary clinic in the nearby city of Bankia has been providing neutering service and veterinary treatment for stray animals since 2013. They also try to rehome stray animals that need extra care through a local adoption program. The cat is a little bit scared at the moment, mm -hmm. but as far as I see from the inspection, she's fine. But the transport to here, this is some kind of stress. Yeah. That's why we cover uh -huh. with blankets, because the cats, they like to hide. Yes. And the levels of stress, they reduce when they have the options to hide. She will be a little bit stressed now. Very soon we will move her from the trap into the cage, because it was not possible to do that on the street. Oh, much, oh, much. She will be neutered. Yeah. We'll give her anti-rabies vaccine. I'm here, I'm here. And she'll be treated against, against parasites. And after 24 hours, we'll bring her back in Yavorov from where we catch her. 
We decided to give the new patients a bit of time away from the cameras so they can get used to these new surroundings. In the meantime, Margot introduces me to another new arrival. Little guy is so cute. What's the story here? One lady brought it to the clinic because she found it on the street and she saw that the condition of this kitten is not okay. Mm -hmm. so and that was this morning? Yes, before 20 minutes. Oh wow, so just 20 minutes before we arrived. Yeah, exactly. And as you see, the kitten is not in the best condition. Now, I'll show you. If we open the eye like this, do you see the membrane, how pale it is? It must be pinkish color, pink. Oh, the part on the inside of the yeah. eye? Yeah, yeah, it's white, right? But it is white. That means that the kitten has most probably anemia. Anemic kitten it is. You see how much ectoparasites the kitten has. This is from fleas. So they are now drinking the blood of this kitten. Yeah. It's, it has, and if you touch the cat, see, you feel all the bones. Oh, she is. Oh, very bony. Yeah, very bony. And now my colleagues will take blood to see what is the situation. Uh huh. Tell me a little bit more about the amenia. Somebody who doesn't know about that, what does that mean? It could be caused by different reasons. Uh, in general, it means that uh, the animal doesn't have enough red blood cells, yes, or the level of hemoglobin is very low. Mm -hmm. What is the reason? There are several reasons, but most common with stray animals is the way they grow up, they are not fed it in a proper way. They have a lot of ectoparasites. So this is the reason why the anemia is so, um, so common with the stray animals. How old do you think she is? Around three months. Around three months? Yeah. She's so cute, so tiny. Although she's not in great condition, I am confident that the Bankra team will have this kitten feeling better in no time. For now, it's time to turn our attention back to the cat we got in the morning. Little. Mm -hmm. Bravo. I'm giving him now the chance to hide if he wants. But he is very cute. He is very, very cute. A young cat between six and eight, eight months old. He seems very well. Now Slavi will check the conjunctivas. more pink color isn't it than that other one yeah. that was white I could see the difference there yeah and um, she'll ask all date to see the heart rhythm as the cats will need to go under further anesthesia yes, for nutrient yeah. process it's important right. to know every possible detail about yeah, them yeah, yeah. including their weight One seventy-two. So we know now how to calculate the proper dosage of the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. But because it becomes too much for him, he needs to hide. I'll put him back into the cage yep. to relax. Okay, so you bring them out, you do a quick check on them. Yeah. Checking their eyes, their mouth, feeling their body, doing their heart. Yeah. And then you know that they're good enough, you weigh them and then you know that you can put them under anesthetic to do exactly. the next operation. Exactly, this is the procedure. So it's very fast. Wow. Okay, so I guess we're going to do exactly the same with the other cat that we also were able to rescue. Yes, exactly the same. It will happen with the other cat. Okay, we should go get the other cat. Now we are in the cat house, which is, you know, technically a rescue for all of the cats that are here just behind the clinic. Margot, it's amazing to see all of these beautiful kittens and cats that have been rescued. Now, these are the ones that actually can't go back out. And explain to me why that is. All these uh, cats here, Rebecca, are actually rescued, like the kitten that we saw this morning mm -hmm. and we treated together this morning. So we won't release them back on the street. We are searching loving families for all these cats that you see here. Each of the cats has its story and uh, they are very cute. They want to play. Mm -hmm. So this is my favorite place into the clinic. We are surrounded by healthy, nice cats. 
And so all of these cats in here are either too young, too old, or they've had an injury, which is why they can't be released back out in the streets. Exactly, exactly. All the cats here are like this. <laughs> So Marga, what's this? This is the, the part here, right? That you just take off the that, top of the ear? This is called air tipping. This means that the, the cat was neutered. So when we release the cats on the street, when we see this, that means that the cat is already neutered and it's not needed to be catched back. We are doing this while the cat is under anesthesia. And it doesn't hurt them, they're not in any no, pain they afterwards? Don't feel, they no. don't feel it. Well, thank you so much for showing me the cat house. I know that there's also some dogs down there too. Yes, now I'll show you the rescue okay, dogs. excellent. <laughs> like for our feline friends, Four Paws also provides care for stray dogs in Sofia. All the while, of course, encouraging the adoption of rescued dogs. Margo, where did these few cuties come from? They are unfortunately again from the street. Hi. Candy, sugar, and lollipop. Candy, sugar, and lollipop. Yes. Very lucky. Mm -hmm. And their story was they got abandoned on the street? Yes, abandoned on the street without their mother. They were like two weeks old. So our colleagues, they have to grow them, feeding them every day on every three hours to survive. Oh. Now they are fine and they are ready for adoption. They're ready for adoption? Yes. They are so cute. Wow, must be so rewarding. This is, this is our engine yeah. to continue. There's hard days, but it's so rewarding at the same time. Yes, at the end of the day, you cannot believe that you had such a hard day. When you see this cute little yeah. paws and noses and ears, it is like Cure everything, the souls, the everything. Mm -hmm. It's Makes so nice. It all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So how long do you think it'll take them to get adopted? We don't know. The, the only problem with these puppies is that they are black. The people are afla afraid of black. I don't know why. Black cats, black puppies. The people, they don't like this color. Really? Mm. But they're so cute. They are so cute. <laughs> Wow, what an incredible day so far here in Sofia, Bulgaria. It's just amazing to see the impact that Four Paws is having right here. I'm so excited because our day has just got started. We are off now to see the AAI part of what Four Paws does and meet a bunch of therapy dogs. We're here at the AAI and I'm now joined by Rosie, who is the head of this place. What does AII stand for and what was the reason that we created this place with Four Paws? Um, this is Animal and Assisted Intervention Project and we do different activities under this project. One of them is uh, Animal Assisted Activities where we work, we go to schools or to kindergartens, explain to children how to behave with stray animals, uh, how to protect them, how to take care of them. We also do uh, animal assisted therapy, which is the longest program. Uh, we work predominantly with children and adolescents with problem behavior and our dogs help them to overcome their difficulties. They are so calm. I couldn't believe it. When we came in here earlier, I was like, these dogs didn't even get up. They didn't come to us. Now they're excited, but they are just so calm. And these are actually stray dogs that have been rescued? Yeah, they used to be stray dogs. Now they have their homes uh, and they live with their dog handlers. Uh, this, uh, the Sho Shoko, he has a foster family. They adopted him after the operation we made to him. Uh, and we trained him uh, as a therapy dog before he started to work with children. And this is Smiley. Smiley, Smiley, come here. Smiley. Hi, uh, Smiley. Yeah, you he's smiley the leader, he's the leader of the group, actually. Uh, um, he lives with uh, his dog handler, Annie, uh -huh. and he's the younger one, six years old, but still very, very, we are very proud of him because both of them have really uh, sad stories. Mm -hmm. uh, the shopper was smashed by a tractor. His uh, paw was smashed. I can see smashed. his paw. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. And they were going to put him down. Yeah. They were going to put a euthanasia. Yeah. 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 And we decided to save him and make him one of our dogs. And uh, similar is the story of Smiley. He came into the clinic with uh, broken legs, uh, beaten by people, 
and he was really scared in the beginning, but later on, uh, because he's very, um, you know, he wants to play all the time. Yes, that's uh, amazing that a dog can come in from broken legs and having such a traumatic time with humans to actually end up helping humans. I mean, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Been, uh, like we've been working with them for one for about a year to prepare them for working with people, but their temper allow us to do this. Yes, amazing. So they've been selected among many other. Uh, dogs in the clinic uh, to be our therapy dogs. You must be so excited when you see this happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love yes. it. Thank you so much for showing me around. Later that day, we get a call informing us that there's a group of stray dogs that have been spotted in the area of Ellen Perlin. The dog catching team springs into action and I get to tag along for the ride. It seems the group is made up of mum and her litter. And although the pups are happy to approach at the sight of food and are easier to catch without darting, priority number one is to catch mum. It's very important to catch the mother. Otherwise, in the spring, we will have new five puppies here. The team sets off to find the elusive mother, darting guns at the ready. Oh, see, so yeah, he got, I think, he got her, but... Four minutes to go to sleep. Four minutes? Yeah. So she can run away for up to... F and after that, she'll start to do okay, it like Okay, so he this. just has to keep an eye on her. Yes, that's why he's following her. But from a distance, otherwise, she'll escape. And sure enough, after a few minutes of careful monitoring, the team is able to safely bring mum in. She's good? She's sleeping well. Hi there, mommy's coming. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Okay, so we should go look for the other one. I don't know where it is. This way through here. It's Sweden. It's all. They're watching them all. We'll wait for you as well, Hello. great job. <laughs> great job. For one of the nearby houses, I hear some people shouting something to the team. But they are workers here. They say that they, uh, they don't want these dogs back. I told them that we'll bring back them tomorrow, so. But they are always like this. Please, you take these dogs. No, um. these are your dogs. These are the community dogs. Yeah. So, Rebecca, you see yes. that the first, these two workers, they say, we don't want the dogs anymore here. Mm -hmm. But you see the lady, she's the local lady that is feeding the dogs. And now she's trying to catch the dog and to give it to us to be neutered and released back here tomorrow. With such conflicting views from the community, I felt I had to learn more about how Four Paws work is perceived by the locals. Jana, we've just caught three dogs. We're right here in the middle of a community and I can feel there's a little bit of discrepancy between some of the community members want the dogs back and some of them don't. What's the concept, you know, for Four Paws to bring them back into their communities? So we have to bring the dogs back to the community. It's also our, our rules and also the national law. Mm -hmm. uh, what we want is for those dogs to live out their life happily um, being treated, being healthy, and being neutered and not to reproduce anymore. Uh, sometimes the community understands this, sometimes they don't understand it. So some people have the ideal world, uh, a vision where all the dogs are taken in by a shelter and taken care of there. What they don't understand is that this is very expensive and it's not a good solution long term. It's not sustainable? It's not sustainable at so all. So what are Four Paws doing to educate the community um, about neutering animals rather than, you know, just putting them in a shelter? Yeah, so, uh, so actually we're doing quite a lot, especially here in Elimpelin. Elimpelin is our pilot community in Bulgaria for community engagements and it's trying to both educate the people, nudge them to doing something on this issue, understanding it as a very basic level and then working on it together with the municipality to actually solve the issue because if you only have the municipality doing it and the people are not behind it, they will keep doing whatever they're doing, which ultimately creates more animals on the street. In the meantime, there has been no luck finding the remaining dog and the clock is ticking. 
The problem is that two of the dogs are sleeping at the moment and they have to be transported directly to the clinic. Right. So what our catchers will do, they'll speak now with the lady to uh -huh. leave the dog yep. and they'll arrange a meeting later on to come pick her to, pick yeah, and to take the other. The team needs to treat the dogs quickly before their sedation wears off. So we decided to head on over to the Four Paws Mobile Clinic instead, which allows the team to work further in the field. Our first patient is on the table. The colleagues will put an IV catheter. After that, we'll put an infusion because uh, this is important while, we are, while the animal is under a surgery. And uh, we'll put uh, a vaccine and a painkiller before the operation. And she'll put now the air tag while the animal is sleeping, yes. Microchip. And is it just registered for Paul's dog? Yeah, as a municipal dog. Uh-huh. But done by four poles. Mm-hmm. That's incredible that they also chip them. All the, the, all the animals that are neutered in our clinic are microchipped. Microchipped okay. as well. And uh, how much does it cost for one dog to have microchip, vaccine, neutered? It's between uh, 80 and 100 euro. Per euro animal. per yes. animal. Including dog catching. After seeing such great work in Bulgaria, I'm curious about where else is Four Paws doing work like this? And I know just who to ask. I'm joined by Lucetta, who is the project manager for stray animals in Europe for Four Paws. So the first thing I want to ask is, I know this is such a really hard you know, number to even give, but how many stray animals do you think there are around the world? <laughs> well, you're starting already with them. Quite a difficult question, like the World Health Org Organization, for instance, they estimate that there are over 200 million dogs around the world. But there are also other sources that say higher numbers and for cats we don't have any figures basically. And that is one of the reasons why for Paws, before we work somewhere, um, is first doing a dog surveys to really try to get an estimation how many dogs and cats we actually have before we start working there and we can really make an impact. Excellent, so where in the world are Four Paws active? Um, so with our stray animal care projects, we started in Romania, actually already in 1999, December 1999. Um, then we also started in Bulgaria and Ukraine, so these are, these are our main focus countries in Eastern Europe. And since 2018, we also work in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia and Thailand that we are active. So quite. Uh, spread out, but quite a numerous amount of countries, I would say, that we are working for stray animals. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah. I've traveled all around the world, and so often I have seen stray dogs and stray cats, and I'm like, am I supposed to pet them? Can I pet them? Should I feed them food? Like, what should somebody do who sees a stray cat or dog? Yeah, so what I normally would do is I would also always look like, what does the animal look like, right? Like, is it really, um, and not just looks like physically, but also what does the behavior look like? Um, um, what I always would do is see if in the neighborhood is there a local organization, for instance, taking care of them. Do you see if there is already food provided? Does the animal have shelter? If it's clearly injured um, or ill, it would be good to reach out to the local animal organization that is in the country or the area that you are there. And of course, if an animal is really coming to you and begging for attention, it's very hard to ignore, I know. Um, but I also would always be careful because you, you never know, they are not always used to human handling, you don't know what they have. So I would always be a bit careful and most importantly, see what is done in the neighborhood and what can you do to actually do something on the bigger scale than just for that one animal. It's amazing things that you guys are doing and Thank I know you. that there's going to be people watching this saying like I haven't seen any stray cats or dogs but like and there's not something that I know in my community but how can somebody at home right now feel like they're contributing and participating with Four Paws and what the work you guys are doing? So actually in the, the stray animal care situation, it's a worldwide problem, right? So I would say if you have an animal yourself, a pet, make sure it's neutered, make sure it's microchipped, make sure it's registered, make sure you are a responsible pet owner. If you don't have an animal yourself, maybe you can foster or even better, adopt. Don't shop, adopt. If you're not able to take care of an animal yourself, um, donate. You know, we can't do anything of this work without donations. And if you're not able to donate, spread the message, spread the word. So I think 
and anyone can help. Whether you have an animal, whether you want to work with animals or whether you love animals but can't work with them, anyone can help one way or another. Mm -hmm. What incredible time that we've had here in Sofia, Bulgaria. I mean, we have learned so much about what Four Paws are doing to make a huge impact and difference on the strayed animals, our cats and dogs. I've personally learned so much. It was amazing to go out into the field, catching the dogs and cats, to then bringing them in to be neutered and then returned to where we found them. You know, you might not think that you can make that much difference, but you can just sharing this video Video and telling a family member or a friend about what you've learned here on this video, we can change the world and we can make a massive impact on animal welfare. So make sure that you share this with somebody today, you share the message, you share the incredible work that Four Paws are doing and together we can make a big difference around the world.